Welcome to Queen of the Ring, the podcast that wants to talk to you all about women's wrestling. My name is Alexa. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different than usual. Instead of regaling you with the facts or history about a person or topic, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a mini-sode about AEW Full Gear 2022. The wrestling promotion All Elite Wrestling had their pay-per-view Full Gear this last Saturday, November 19th. While there was so fucking much that happened during this four-hour pay-per-view, I'm going to talk about just two things, really, that caught my attention and I found particularly captivating. The pay-per-view was action-packed, things were happening constantly, and what I'm going to talk about is only amongst a million things that happened that were incredible, such as the Elite versus Death Triangle and the wrestling that takes place when those six people are together in the squared circle is just incredible. Nyla Rose and Jade. I'm a Nyla Rose stan, so I, I, you know, I wanted her to have the TBS championship, even if she stole it. I think she should keep it. <laughs> there was MJF's cock ring, and then separately, William Regal's brass knuckles. There was a lot to honorably mention before I really get into this episode. But what I'd like to focus on for this mini episode that we have here is the comeback of Soraya and the match between Tony Storm and Jamie Hayter. Firstly, I want to start off with the comeback of a century with Soraya. Soraya was previously Paige in the WWE, as I'm so sure many listeners know. Through the different enterprises she would enter in the WWE, she went through a lot in front of the fans. She was battling a drug misuse and addiction problem. She went through relationships, engagements, and this was all on a television show on E! called Total Divas. While you're watching the show, you see when Soraya gets injured and the conversations that she has with the higher-ups around her and just how hopeless and completely out of control she feels. While she was wrestling Sasha Banks, the incredibly famous wrestler, she accidentally got a kick a little bit too hard to the head and broke her neck. Apparently, I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I don't fucking know really, but the separate fusions that she had gotten on her spinal cord and surgeries after that had proved a little bit counterproductive because it had drained her spinal fluid completely. And for the last five years, she thought that her career was over forever. It's all so incredibly sad knowing just how important wrestling is to Paige and her whole family. Her brother, her mother, and her father, and I think another sibling of her, they're all wrestlers, and she's been wrestling since she was 13 years old. I don't want to get too deep into the weeds about this because I, of course, want to do a Soraya episode in the future, but, you know, suffice it to say those five years were crazy for her. A lot went on, and it kind of led her all to this place of wanting to come back to a wrestling ring, even if it was just as a valet. But because she found out that she was going to be medically cleared, she could wrestle again. And it's all so emotional, and people keep calling it a miracle. And I don't know if it's if it's that. I mean, I'm not a doctor of the spine, but it does seem pretty fucking miraculous. And coming back into the space in this ring that she just has always thrived in, she gets the opportunity to be her wrestling persona, but now as the person that she is and has become over these years. I mean, she started wrestling so, so young, and it's exciting for her that she now gets to take that persona that she created so long ago and make it who she is now. 
In an interview with Chris Van Vliet, she talks about how she gets to evolutionize herself now. She isn't the same person that she was when she was like that scene kid wrestling in a wrestling ring. She now gets to show how much she has evolved. And something interesting is that when she came into the ring, you can see that evolution in her ring wear and her ring gear. She still wears these black pieces with leather But she's wearing this kind of like elevated type of bondage harness on the top that I would absolutely love to see her continue to expand upon and grow on from that one look to keep going because I think that looks so cool because I just love the way that fashion can create identity or support identity and help with one's character. It's, It's just such a fascinating part of wrestling, I think. But she still references Paige with some of her fashion choices. You know, it's still two pieces, kind of like she used to wear, and those fishnet stockings with her Doc Martens. She's still pulling from this person that she was and is still. I just wanted to bring this up briefly because I'm so happy for her, and I'm so excited to see where her career continues to go. She had her match with Britt Baker that she won, and I'm just hoping to see her continue to spread her sweet little wings and fly away. Now I want to get into a match that I found particularly captivating during Full Gear 2022. Tony Storm versus Jamie Hayter. I'll start with Tony because she was the first that I was introduced to. I knew of her because of stardom wrestling in Japan, and then, of course, because of the WWE. And I just absolutely think she is amazing. I'm so impressed by everything that she does. It's just captivating and awe-inspiring. And there is no question that I feel the same way about Jamie. I found out about Jamie through AEW itself, but I know she has a lot of fans from the indie scene, and she is just such an incredible wrestler, and their dynamic together is magical. I took some notes throughout the match, and I kind of just want to try to go through them with you and take you step by step from what made me feel crazy in this match and how much I loved it. First of all, I loved how they both came out. Jamie looked so fucking cool with this new hairstyle, and Tony looked classically her. It was all very fascinating. And the way that Jamie Hayter is over by the crowd, not just on that Saturday night, but every single night that I watch AEW, is incredible. The crowd fucking loves her, and they eat up every single thing she does. While the match was starting, I saw the most incredible Jamie Hayter poster that someone made that just said, Hayter? I love her. (laughs) And that just really made me laugh. While the match started to build and they were doing these blows back and forth and kind of taking it slowly at first, something that Tony busted out while Jamie was on the apron was the hip attack. And it made me immediately, of course, think of the wrestler Asuka. And they, of course, also have, as I previously mentioned, a connection through stardom wrestling. And they do kind of have a similar style of wrestling as well. And while we're watching as the audience, Tony and Jamie go at each other, It is just so clear how they have such amazing chemistry between them. They, it doesn't hurt that they have a similar hard hitting style that is just rugged, but they have such a good flow between the two of them. And you can tell that they're friends in real life, maybe, or that they just get along and that they know each other well. And speaking of a rugged, hard hitting style, Every time I see Tony Storm's hip attack when her opponent is sitting in the corner, it is so fucking vicious. Just seeing this person like head snap back into the turnbuckle is just absolutely outrageous. It is amazing. And shortly after that hip attack, there was a falling headbutt from Tony to Jamie. And I think that's about the time that Tony Storm broke her nose in this match just about when Rebel came out to try to help Jamie out. From the moment that the blood starts to drip down the face of Tony Storm and you see her 
50s style hair in her face. This match just goes up and up and up and it never, it just never stops. There are elbow strikes back and forth and back and forth off of the ropes. You can feel them through the television. And that was all followed by Rebel hitting Tony with the championship belt in the back of the head. And this got her ejected, Rebel I mean, of course, and that shriek that she let out in front of the referee and the fans just made me laugh so hard. I love her. The fierceness with which Jamie Hayter picks her opponents up and smashes them on the ground is absolutely earthquaking. It really is. She is such a fucking strong woman type that, and I really hope that she gets the opportunity to fight Brit and they get to have a little split up and a little bit of a fight with one another because I think that would be absolutely amazing. And it would push their storyline a little bit further and further. But back to the match. And after they share a few more vicious fucking blows, Tony ends up on the outside and Britt ends up giving her a stomp right onto the championship. But Tony's still kicked out. Every close up that the camera goes to Tony's face gives the audience an extra moment to examine just how broken her nose is. When Britt gets onto the top turnbuckle, she takes it off, it's all over for Tony, and Jamie wins. The announcer, JR, said before the match that he assumed Tony's lack of outside help, you know, from outside the ring, that would end up biting her in the ass, and that was true. The way that they wrote it, Rebel and Brit helped a bunch. But I still thought it was such an incredible match that I wanted to talk about, and I know maybe I didn't go through all of it, but I just wanted to touch on a few points of it and keep it short and sweet, but I just thought it was the best match of the night next to the Elite and Death Triangle. If you're still here, I want to say thank you so much for listening. Queen of the Ring is written and created by me, Alexa Pruitt, and the music is by Kreider Dane of Helter Skelter Music Productions. If you like what you hear, please join me again. Thank you so much. (laughs) 